So, All In is taking place at Wembley. And they decided to do All Out in Chicago afterwards, just like they did last year. And now they have moved. They've not canceled All Out. They've moved it. So now the All Out show is going to take place on September 7th. So originally it was six days earlier. It was a Sunday show. Now it's going to be a Saturday show a week later. It was originally September 1st. Now it's September 7th. So in the story here about, you know, the two shows, they made the big announcement. Well, I mean, they announced this a while ago, but here's a lineup for all of the upcoming AW pay-per-views. Seven pay-per-views between now and the end of the year. We got Double or Nothing this weekend. Forbidden Door is June 30th. That's in the UBS Arena in New York. August 25th will be All In Wembley in London. And then we've got All Out September 7th in Hoffman Estates. We have got Wrestle Dream once again in Tacoma, Washington on October 12th. We have Full Gear November 23rd, Newark, New Jersey. And we have the World's End Show on December 28th in Orlando. Now, I don't want to read too much into this. I don't want people saying I'm doing any reporting because I'm not. But I will say this. Everybody is expecting Will Ospreay to beat Swerve for the AW World title at the All-In Show in Wembley. Well, Wembley is August 25th. And... Six weeks later, they are doing a wrestle dream in Tacoma, Washington. So, I don't think they're beating Swerve at all in. And he's going to go into wrestle dream in his hometown in Tacoma, Washington on a major pay-per-view as a loser and a former AEW champion. So, I don't know what they're going to do. But I think we'll know more maybe this weekend. I think we'll know more around Forbidden Door. But my gut tells me that All In is not going to be Will Ospreay versus Swerve for the AEW title. So we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. And who knows? There could be there could be a lot of surprises between now and Wrestle Dream. So we'll see where they end up going with all of that. Also... On uh, AW uh, All-In Weekend, August 23rd, it's going to be Chris Jericho, Fozzie, the O2 Forum Kentish Town. He's doing a concert, and on that concert, performing with Chris Jericho, will be Swerve Strickland and Flash Garments. They will be special guests at the concert taking place the Friday before All In. It'll be the first time Strickland and uh, Flash Garments have uh, done a concert together as a rap duo in the United Kingdom. And so if you want to get tickets, they're going on sale here very soon. But uh, Chris Jericho and Swerve, both performing together at the O2 Forum Kentish Town, August 23rd, which is a couple of days before All In. So those tickets are going on sale very soon. So we talked yesterday about... uh, Actually, I don't know if we did yesterday. Did we talk about the uh, collision and rampage ratings yesterday? Somebody let me know, because I missed the show, except for the the last part of the program when I was talking about the Raw report. (laughs) One person says yes, one person says no. Well, I'll talk about it all after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. So all of the uh, shows this week did a lot better. NBA is starting to uh, wind down. I think Raw's got one more show versus the NBA, and then it'll be smooth sailing up until the Olympics. And the Collision Show did 523,000 viewers, and it was the second largest audience the show has done so far in 2024. 0.15 and 18 to 49. And Rampage ended up doing 391,000 and a 0.13. 
So uh, good numbers for those two shows. My God, yesterday on the internet, post those numbers. Looks like their show's not as bad as you said. All day long. One week is one week, okay? Maybe this whole thing's going to turn around. I don't know. But when the show does a really bad number, I say the same thing. It's one week. Let's wait and see how things go. Not to mention the quality of the show. The quality of a singular show rarely has anything to do with how the number does for that show. So we see show before, the show after, what's advertised, etc. So we can all relax. The Raw show was also up 1.74 million at a .56 in 18 to 49. Best numbers shows done in five weeks. And uh, 9% increase in viewers, 6% 18 to 49. And uh, well up from last year as well. And what's interesting about the uh, the Raw number and the SmackDown number, because I was looking at both, so there were a few spikes on those shows. And you will be stunned to know that the biggest spike by far on SmackDown was Cody and Logan Paul. The uh, thing just goes straight up for them. And it also got a bump at the end of the show for the Randy Orton main event. So I don't think any of that is surprising at all. And then for Raw, the biggest spike on the show, and actually the highest rated quarter on all of Raw, was EO Sky versus Lyra in their tournament match. It, uh, it did the best number of anything on the show. And... And everyone's got a million reasons why, but I think, uh, you know, one of them was where it was positioned in the show helped. And also, people are taking this tournament seriously. And what's funny is if you watched the the actual match, like the crowd was into it, you know, they were into big dives and everything, but they weren't into it like a, a big time main event, likely because they figured that there was absolutely no chance that EO was losing this match. And But they stuck around, and they watched it. And if you watch the live crowd, they went nuts for that finish. When when uh, Lyra got the upset victory clean, I mean, it got a huge pop. People jumped to their feet cheering, and it did a great number on television as well. So I don't want to tie this directly into a lot of what I've been saying about AEW, but I'll just mention that. The fact is, fans do want to see people elevated. They want to see people who are lower be people who are higher and move up. And that's what happened in that match and in this tournament. And, you know, you you build up somebody. A lot of people never watched NXT. Lyra came up from NXT. She got drafted. Probably a lot of people had absolutely no idea who she was. I mean, to the point where even the announcers, like, they don't even know the name of her finish. They're like, she's going for the... Her finish! Well, she won three straight matches in the King of the Ring. And then there she is going up against Io Sky in a semifinal match. And the people watched it. They wanted to see who was going to win. And they got an upset win. And my guess is that, uh, you know, the two matches, the two tournament matches on Friday on SmackDown are probably going to do very well as well. And it'll be interesting to see how the pay-per-view does. Because that's the finals of the tournament. You know, people are into this tournament. And I think one of the reasons they are is because it's been maybe the best King of the Ring tournament they've ever run. I think people mentioned, like, there was a 2003 uh, King of the Ring tournament that was pretty good. But, I mean, most of the time, the King of the Ring was just like, it was nothing. You know, when they ran it on pay-per-view, it's like a bunch of short matches. Nothing happened in matches. And then we had, like, Mabel, guys like that winning. And then later they would do it just as something to do. But this has been a very, I mean, they've booked this as a very, very serious tournament. Literally, the name of the pay-per-view with the finals is King and Queen of the Ring. So it's paid off. You know, people want to see wrestling. They like tournaments. They like winners and losers. And they like people being elevated. None of this has ever changed from the first days of wrestling. So that's the update on the numbers. It was a very impressive number. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.